I wanted a black owned and powered bookstore. I didn't feel like we were being heard or served in the book industry instead of a side character or an afterthought. We get to be at the center of our stories. And so loyalty was born. DC is Chocolate City. It's a queer city. It's a city of disabled activists. It's an immigrant city. And owning a bookstore here means that all of those stories, that cacophony of voices, gets to have a home. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the books that you love. Well, people are like, oh, I don't read black books because they're hard. Or I don't read black books because they're difficult and I want like a later read. And I was like, first of all, we have romance, we have fantasy, we've gone to space, like we're all there. One of the things I always recommend to people to jump into, especially if they're a little bit newer and are looking for an entry point into science fiction or fantasy, Dr. Nende Okafor's Binti. She writes African Jujuism, which is not our Western mythology. Look at this. You're gonna have yeah. an adventure in a novella form and you're gonna feel so much better when you're done. No. The thing that worries me though, I'm gonna need something else after this. <laughs> sure. Because I'm gonna clear yeah. this before the plane takes off. You can also get it in the complete trilogy form <gasps> like this. Oh, you're trying to kill me, girl. Okay, I'm so just tell saying, me more. I'm tell just saying, more. I'm ready. I got you. Okay. Walter Mosley's Devil in a Blue Dress. You want that mystery life. The beginning of a series that is still ongoing. As someone who grew up reading mystery, but didn't see us in mystery. Uh, this series was a life-changing read. It's mm. also a blast. Training School for Negro Girls. It's a short story collection, women coming of age here in Washington, DC. It's dealing with gentrification. It's dealing with working at the airport. I know what this life is. Okay, I'm really excited to it's read so this. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Loyalty started out as a pop-up. Now we have two locations. We're in the Petworth neighborhood of Washington, D.C. This neighborhood that has gone through so much change, it's been gentrified. We're still here for the community, both as it grows and to represent who made Petworth what it is. I know you and I both know Clint. Yes. How the word is passed. It's a reckoning with the history of slavery in America. Clint's a poet, and I think that really shines through. The way that it's written is so open and vulnerable. And that's so rare to find in a history text. I really love talking to him about how he self-reflects. I am reading this with the same anxieties in the middle of a Sons of a Confederacy event. Yep. Elaine Wiltor's book is definitely one of my favorites. All the stuff that she had navigated. In such a short period of time. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, she's what got, she's only got like a, a few years on me. I know. <laughs> like You're like, listen. She's been busy. <laughs> Girl has been putting in the work. I yeah. cannot say enough how much this book has mattered to so many people that I've handed it to, who they come in, maybe they're even looking for a self-help book. Maybe they're looking for a book about business advice. And I'm like, if you're trying to navigate these streets, this is gonna help you. Elaine acknowledges and talks about colorism. Yeah. and pretty privilege, and she addresses things that most people don't name. The audiobook is really wonderful too, oh, so, so if that's your preferred method of reading, absolutely dig in the audiobook. She does a fabulous job on it, and you can really kind of hear it. You hear it, and you get to hear her mom. That's like, true, it's the that's cutest part. about that. That's really lovely. It was a great warm-up to reading white feminism yeah. that can be cathartic for people who experience privilege. Absolutely, I mean, I'm mixed, I'm very light, um, I navigate an extremely privileged world, which is the new book industry. And every time I walk in a room, my blackness walks first, but there's also relief that I'm like, oh, I'm the kind of black person they're very comfortable with. And it's my job to not let that comfort sit. Reading white feminism was absolutely a way of processing that. This is the pressure on you to be a certain kind of feminist and what kind of feminist do you actually want to be? She really does put the history of that tug of war right in front of you. Mm -hmm. You can't help but look at yourself. Absolutely. Language evolves, words change, definitions change, but knowing that history, that's what this book does. Oh my God, so Bear Coon, I'd be hard pressed to like name an author who recounts dialects that way today, mm -hmm. and it's really uncomfortable. But it's really uncomfortable, I mean, but like one of the things that we don't talk enough about with Zora Neale Hurston is that she is in fact a scholar of her people. She saw time running out and she recorded it. This was my introduction to her, which is 
I know, right? Like, you really... <laughs> you went hard. You I went, went real hard. hard. Thank God it's, like, an essay and yeah. isn't actually this thick yeah. in terms of, like, actually reading yeah. the book itself because right. I don't I don't know if I could handle this much. Yeah. When they found the Clotilda, the ship that Cujo came to America on, right. I went to cover it. And I not only spent time with the person who found the ship, but family members of his and of his community community in yeah. Africa town and seeing how close that community is to chemical plants how you can connect the dots between slavery and today there's no lost lineage no um, and it's things are made intentionally foggy and I think something about the books that we both love cut through that real fast even if it is adding layers of nuance it's adding layers of truth on top of it, not obscuring thing. James Baldwin, another country. It's the story of a community. What happens when your church isn't enough for you? What happens when your family can't be there for you? Um, this book sounds like therapy. It is, it's therapy. Like I just like read it and was like, oh look, all of my eye makeup is down my face. It's fine, that's great. And I've rarely seen this story so honestly told and so lovingly told. Mm. One last thing I would say, if you want to heal the young person inside of you who did not get to see ourselves in our young people's literature, we're in a golden era of books for kids right now. Our local hero and one of my favorite chapter book and young adult authors is Jason Reynolds. He's absolutely amazing at capturing the spirit. He talks directly to kids. At a bookstore, I always like to spend time in the kids section and I love to spend time in the romance section, but also I like to be a little judgy and make sure they've really thought about what books they're putting in that section. Who gets to fall in love? Okay, I've got my work cut out for me. I'm really excited. It's gonna be a long reading list, but books don't expire. You can get to it when you get to it. Thank you. You're welcome.